all of the power level 160 missions the toughest one to do in my opinion is the category 4 fight the storm mission so as you can see I'm set to friends I've got nobody in my party I'm going to attempt to complete this category 4 fight the storm mission completely solo Because it involves defending an objective, I'm going to use the Ice King in the lead. I've got Slow Your Roll for my team perk. And then my standard Mega Base Power Modulation Lofty Architecture for the defense. Cupid's Arrow for my bow. Survivors to keep me alive. Banner for the respawn point and slow field in case anything goes wrong. So once loaded into the mission, the first thing to do is to go and find the four atlases. I'm quite lucky, I've already spotted one of them. The four will be relatively close together, but not right on top of each other, unless you're incredibly lucky. Generally, they will be spread out quite a bit, so much so that you can't protect more than one or two with your base, even with Mega Base in the lead. I'm just going to take out the random husks that are sitting around so that I get less interruptions when I'm actually going through the process of building. And also while I'm here, I'm getting an idea of the lay of the land, where the access points might be. And clearing down some of the environmental structures, the random rocks, trees, buildings, etc. around. So there's a ramp up there, which I probably want to block off. Just checking around here for any further ramps. So by taking a good look around before you even start building, you can work out where choke points are likely to be, the areas that need to be more heavily defended. Here I'm going to use the wooden stair trick from Hubocopter. If you place the ramps in the correct configuration, then husks can't walk up and smaller husks will just not even consider it to be a valid path. Larger husks, such as mist monsters and smashes and those kind of things, will just walk past them as if they don't exist, and animals will knock them down, but smaller husks, generally speaking, will just ignore them. It's not a 100% guarantee. I have had instances where assassin husks have bashed on the wood to get through, but for the most part, it's a really cheap way of blocking off. So this atlas is actually quite close to the ramp. It's going to make it a little bit awkward to build around. And I'm just making sure there's no other ramps up that I haven't noticed. No other ways for the husks to come pouring up. Because if I can block off all of these ramps on one side, that means I need to use a lot less structures to defend and I can probably just ignore the amplifiers on that side. Just grab this blue glow while I'm here. You'll need four blue glow to start the mission off. Four axes, four blue glow. Pretty simple really. So I think with those wooden ramps there, that's probably all the defences I need for that amplifier. So 
So the wolf there got frozen because of my team perk, but uh, there's no animation to show the wolf being frozen. Okay, so this here is another awkwardly placed amplifier. So it's in the sky, which is good because it means it's not going to get directly attacked, but because it's right above a slope, that's going to make it difficult for me to add a structure to hold it up. So the stairs underneath will probably do the job. I don't really want to place a flat floor going out to it because husks will walk across that and then bash into the Uh, device itself. So I'm just going to put this doorway in. So I'm using a doorway because husks won't see that as a targetable block so it won't get propanes, won't throw their tanks against it and smashers won't knock it down. But having placed the atlas, that's knocked down the stair that was underneath it that was actually supporting it so I need to put that back up. I'll be honest, I'm a bit nervous about that. It's very close to the ground, but that's the hand I've been dealt, and at least it's floating, which makes it a bit easier to support. I'm just going to place a roof on top of it so that if a flinger starts throwing husks up there, it will walk off. And now I'm going to think about how to build for this one. Now, because it's over an air gap, what I want to do is make it so it's difficult for anything being thrown at it to actually hit it. Again, I'm going to block off this ramp here with some wooden stairs. The way I see it, you get a couple of attempts at this, so if these wooden stairs don't work, then I can build something a bit more permanent later on. So I'm just going to place a couple of extra structures there. Now, the reason I've edited that floor there is it means that husks can't walk across and use that as a way to bash into the atlas itself. And then I need to find the fourth atlas, which is over here, according to the mini-map. Okay, it's floating up here, so I need to place some supporting structures for this one. Just use some stairs to get up to it. Okay, so that's all four atlases placed. Again, I'm going to put some structures around this to make it so that it's difficult for anything to be thrown at it. So I'm placing a roof above and extending it out and placing a wall in front of it and then the stairs next to the amplifier itself I'm editing so that the reason being is it gives a very narrow angle for projectiles to be thrown up there by flingers and lobbers. They're unlikely to be able to stand and do a, a decent amount of damage from below. But also any that are thrown up onto the top are not going to bash their way through the side and take down some of those structures because they want to take the most direct route, which will be straight through the middle. So now looking at the mini-map, I can see the purple and white on the map, which is indicating where the spawn points are going to be. So I can see there's a whole bunch of them here and there's a another natural choke point here because of the ramp. Some of them may walk ac directly across onto the ramp but then they all have to walk up across this section here. So I'm going to make that one tile wide and trap that up so that all the huts will be funneled through that little gap so I don't need to set up huge numbers of traps. The husks are not going to bash their way through the walls because I'm not forcing them too far off the shortest path that they have. So generally speaking, the husks will take the most direct route they can. They won't drop down anything that's over three tiles high unless they're absolutely forced to because that will do them damage. And you can make them walk around one or two structures without them bashing through because their AI works in such a way that it works out whether it's going to be quicker for them to bash through or just to walk past. And that little edited wall means the husks will walk around. So I'm just going to use a wooden ramp here to get up so I can place a ceiling above the two 
tiles there. And above that I am going to place some ceiling tire traps. The one next to the ramp is designed to push the husks down the ramp and the one in front of it is designed to push the husks back. So what I'm trying to do is stall those husks as much as possible and then I'm going to add some more tire traps above this ramp so that any husks that do get pushed down get pushed repeatedly. So I don't need to use super high power traps here, I'm using tier 4 traps. They're not designed to kill the husks, they're there to just slow the husks down. I don't want that wall there because I want the husks to actually be knocked all the way down. And again, I'm using relatively low level floor freeze traps. They are there to stall the husks. They're not going to do them any damage. And apart from a little bit more impact, there's no real benefit to using power level 144 floor freeze traps compared to the 77s. And then I'm just placing a couple of walls there so that any husks that spawn uh, the pitchers and zappers can't shoot at me. And then just another tire trap. So anything that gets knocked to the bottom is going to get hit repeatedly. I'm going to take out these stairs here because I don't want this to be charged by a smasher. At the moment the smashers will just wander through. They'll get hit by the tire traps. It'll do them a little bit of damage but it won't kill them. I could go and rescue that survivor but I've no real need to, so I'm not going to spend my time dealing with that now. I'm going to carry on building around Amplifier A, so I think I'm going to need to do a bit more of a clever build around this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place walls with doors in them. As I mentioned before, these don't get targeted by propanes or smashers. Get rid of these stairs because that will be targeted by propanes and smashers. And then I need to put some more defences around this side. So having just knocked down the stair I'm considering putting another one up. But actually I can get away with it. I can just place one up there and jump up. So again, just editing those floors so that any husks that do get thrown up there can't actually use the floors to attack the amplifier itself. And then in front of this amplifier, which is going to be the one that's going to get the most direct attacks, I am going to place walls too high, doors in all of them obviously, ceilings above. those of you that have seen some of my other videos will know exactly what's coming. I can't get rid of that bush, it's just going to sit there and be in the way. But above I'm going to be placing my ceiling drop traps, double reload, double durability. And then floor freeze traps underneath, all oriented so that they push the husks away from the wall. When you add the floor freeze traps and the ice king together, that means husks that attack the structure will get frozen most of the time and not actually be able to do too much damage to the structure itself before they are frozen. Which means that with the other perks on the base, 
that should keep the wall up short of any sort of catastrophic disaster happening like a propane going off on one or a smasher charging at a animal that will potentially just rip through there and allow lots of husks to pour in as you can see from this side there's not a lot of protection over here so I'm just going to chuck in some more walls using a brick where they could be hit by husks and then just wood elsewhere I'm not expecting anything to be able to come up those ramps and again I'm just putting some wall, wooden walls around just in case And then by extending these walls up here, it just makes it a bit more difficult for a lobber or a flinger to target. Because they're all going to be spawning down in that little corner. And although the little husks can't get up, if you've got something that can chuck projectiles up, be it a husk or a flaming skull, then it's worth having a tiny bit of protection. So as I reckon, this amplifier here, amplifier A, is going to be the one that's going to get the most attention from the husks. That's where I'm placing my base. I will be l lurking around this area, really, but also keeping an eye on the other amplifiers. Less so because I don't think they're going to get attacked because of the walls. And then I'm just going to harvest up some brick and go and get the rest of the blue glow that's needed. started the mission now and I'm going to go and check and see how my initial set of traps is working as you can see all the husks are getting funneled down into the tire traps and the floor freeze I have added a couple more tire traps just so that anything that does manage to sneak out will get hit that little bit more. The more time they spend, be, spend being delayed up here, the less time they have down by the actual amplifier itself. And that all seems to be working okay, so I'm just gonna go and make sure nothing untoward is happening on that side. So it's quite expensive, obviously, building for four amplifiers been quite lucky with this in that I've been able to get away with using a lot less structures around some of my amplifiers. And also I farmed up a bit. Whilst looking for the blue one, just to keep on top of things. So the drop traps are going off quite a lot, that means that there's husks wandering around down there, they're all being dealt with. Absolutely nothing has got anywhere near this wall yet, which is good, apart from these blasters here. So these will have walked up the ramps, they ignore those wooden stairs and they can just walk straight up here. And we will get the odd husk that makes it through the drop traps, and in fact we may also have some husks which have walked all the way around. Now, as you can see there were some lobbers down there, they're struggling to get an angle to be able to hit the amplifier from underneath because of the ceilings and entity floors. And as you can see we've got these blasters down here but they're not actually doing anything to the amplifiers, they're not really interested in the amplifiers, they're more interested in just damaging the structures and damaging commanders, in fact they were damaged structures purely to get to the commanders and generally speaking they will just wander around and 
shoot at you, which can be quite annoying. I'm just going to switch over here to pot shot just to get rid of him, and that one's despawned. Okay, that's the sound of a flinger. Flingers are an absolute killer when it comes to defense type missions because they will just throw husks over the top where you're much less strongly defended. But fortunately they do make that screaming noise so you know when there's one around. And it's just a case of finding it and dealing with it quickly. Fire truck there doing a great job. They're not killing everything. Some things are being killed, but that's not their primary purpose. You see these husky husks. I've still got a lot of health, and something is damaging my amplifier, so I'm going to quickly go and have a look and see if I can spot it. So we've got a zapper down there. So it could have been that zapper that's damaged it, so I can't see anything else that could be damaging it. Okay, so this second amplifier is also being attacked, so I need to just get up and find out what's happened. Okay, so it looks like something has come up and taken out one of the wooden ramps there. So I'm just going to put that wooden ramp back in. And as you can see, immediately that ramp went in, most of the husks just turned around and walked away, and the other ones that stood there looking a bit confused. Okay, so it's taken a bit of damage, but nothing too much. And now we're starting to get riot huskies with shielders on them. They can be more of a problem because they can take quite a lot of punishment before they die. And it sounds like something is back to bashing on Amplifier B again. You get the odd husk that manages to phase through the ramp. And again, that ramp has been knocked down, so I'm just going to place it back up again. And we have a smasher up there. Now he can have walked through, and he's just having a, a good old rampage across there. And Although the Smasher charged into Amplifier B, I don't think that's the problem. Because the Smasher won't normally damage an Amplifier. So I've repaired that. Ah, so that's what's happened. Is this amplifier over here, amplifier C, something knocked down the wooden ramp that was holding this amplifier up, and immediately the supporting structure disappears, the entire amplifier gets damaged. So that's what's caused me to fail there. So now I have to have a think about a better way of supporting that, because I'm assuming that a smasher or propane came up there and threw a tank. But I'm going to go and get some more blue glow while I think about it. Farm up a few more materials while I'm gone. And I'm placing in a few scene electric fields. And what I've done is I've just added a couple of arches by that amplifier so that if the ramp does get destroyed again, the arches should hold up. And we're back at four another go. I've done very little additional building. As you can see there's an awful lot of husks spawning down there. My drop traps here. Absolutely working perfectly. I've not added anything. 
directly here. But I've added a few ceiling electric fields just in front of Amplifier A. Just so that I don't have to spend as much time over this side, I can keep a better eye on some of the amplifiers at the back. And there are a few husks that are wandering up this slope now. shot just in case there are any flingers again as there were last time around already blasters that wander around just want to make sure I can deal with them quickly and again there is a blaster that has decided that it is going to just do some random damage Unfortunately, because that bush is in the way, I really can't see how many husks are down there. Taker that needs to be dealt with. And you can see down there the two wooden arches that I added to that amplifier. That just means that if the ramp that's underneath it gets bashed out of the way, the amplifier won't fall down and I won't fail like I did a moment ago. to the north of Amplifier C just to make sure no buses go wandering around there. Looking for a route up to Amplifier A. FPS here taking an absolute beasting from all the drop traps and just trying to record at the same time. And again, getting a small amount of damage on some of these amplifiers. I'm not sure where that damage is coming from, but I can also hear a flinger, so I need to deal with that.
So most of the husks are still walking down the ramp. There are a few that are dropping off the side. And there's a nurse husk there. You'll quite often find nurse husks wandering around at the same time as propanes. There's a minute and a half left, and I appear to have some lobbers down here that are chucking projectiles up, which is exactly why I placed a roof. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a couple of anti-air traps down here. I'm going to use these ones. They are double range, double reload, heal to builds attached. They will quite easily take out a lobbers projectile. and the heels built attached from traps will stack on top of the power base noxes perk as well. So we're into the last 30 seconds now but you still can't be complacent. There is a lover somewhere. and take it from someone who failed endurance with two seconds to go in wave 30 you really don't want to lose your focus right at the end but I think I should be okay and there we go, just managed to respawn in time and that's all four atlases in a power level 160 mission done solo. Thanks for watching.